you go to Los Angeles and that's a, yeah. on everybody's hit mindset that they're going to become this famous actor. And I think a good chunk of those people that are homeless in Los Angeles are, ha, ha, went there for the dream and it didn't happen. I was um, going to this shoot magazine shoot for this other Miss Hollywood thing. And there was a few paparazzis there. And when I showed up and I was just in tears, I was just crying and they go, we want to use you in the shoot but we're going to have to reschedule because you're not all together. And the reason why I was also not all together is because I was also designing clothes for people, not, there's a few celebrities, there was models I was doing for LA Music Awards and I show up and at that moment, because my attorney said that I could take my daughter out of the county and I wasn't supposed to. And I had to pay my attorney to fix the problem too because I was going to be arrested when I came back. Oh. And I was just crying in tears because my ex-husband sent, sent them after me. I was like, for my divorce and surgery uh, and, and designing clothes and then going to a photo shoot. It all was happening all at once. It was. It's just called Stronger Than I Know. Yeah. And it's just, it's about my trials all the way, even from how things stemmed when I was a child. Because you get so used to that lifestyle of who's kind of beating you down. Yeah. But all, all in the end, it's okay to have therapy. Therapy is not a bad thing. I come from a generation that is, is just don't have therapy. Hey everyone, I am Ajay Tambe, the host and producer of Create Your Ears in Podcast. And today I have with me a wonderful guest. She is a fighter. Okay, she is an actress. She is in costume. She is in design. She is in, you know, something that every artist would like to be a part of. As a journey, she is involved into multiple things. She is a multi-talented artist. She grew up on a farm in Oregon and she is now in California. She is really working hard. She is fighting for domestic violence and she is putting out a word in this world that yes, being brave and being strong and uh, making sure that you put your voice and fight against uh, in this world and you still can become what you are looking to do. Okay, no matter what setbacks comes into your life, it's not going to stop you. It's not going to make you weak. It's only going to make you strong. So today I have with me a very special guest. Welcome, welcome to the show, Kaylin. Oh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's, it's, it's really great to have you uh, in the network. Uh, we got connected a month back, I guess. And you were the one guest who saw the message. And then you said, hey, I want to be there. I, I thought like, hey, you read that message? What I typed? And you said, yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm just looking to get this done and figure out date but due to some you know uh, time changes I kind of messed up I was also not in good health at that moment the moment we talked so that's why I mentioned Sunday as Saturday and the whole thing messed up but I'm oh, really yeah. glad that we are here yeah yeah I'm, I'm really glad that we are here so uh, first of all Kate what's going on with you what's 2024 for you now what's going on well I, I've I've um jumped over a few hurdles and here and there um right now i mean let, i'm going to go backtrack a little bit because i was doing sure. stand-up comedy for a while and i did have i had heart surgery last year and oh. and um so that kind of slowed me down but i had a few photo shoots in the last couple of weeks and i i i ran into a new pr person that's going to help me develop my social media better because mm -hmm. it's ch it changes so much yeah, and I'm right. usually paying my kids to do my social media for me because I, I sometimes feel outdated. Um, uh, yeah. But I really am jotting down notes. I mean, I just wrote a book this last year, but I really would like to always interact with my audience and yeah. and um, make them laugh, you know, con have them connect with me that they're not the only ones going through certain situations. But doing stand up comedy, you know, I I've had I've had chances, to, you know, to make the audience laugh and not care what other people think. If they're going to walk out uh, of the room, if they don't like my joke, so well, see you later. But, yeah, I guess uh, this is uh, new to know about your stand -up comedy. Yeah, journey. sorry I didn't mention it, but I, I was yeah. doing it for the last couple of years. So, uh, okay, okay. So, uh, what's your schedule look like in 2024? Like, uh, how, because you just got into heart surgery and I guess kind of slowed down. It was about a year so, ago. It slowed me okay, down. A year, a year ago. ago. Okay, so how is your uh, schedule related to art and anything that you do now? Like, uh, is it filled with films, auditions, stand-up comedy? How you are you juggling well, out in July? A little over a year ago, I I was able to 
write a screenplay and um, write a screenplay and have some actors and myself perform in it. And I was able to um, submit my first short film festival. And I, I was taking classes wow. for that. Um, mm -hmm. And the year before I did three short films mm -hmm. and they, they are on YouTube, but I did them more to get experience, be learn what's behind the camera and what's in front of the camera. I've worked on a, most studios out in Los Angeles and Hollywood, but nothing like big and major. I did a lot more stand in because um, I stood stand in yeah. for like Joan Cusack and Tig Notaro mm -hmm. and, and Joan mm -hmm. Cusack is a lot taller than me. So they had to put me in like really big heels and to get the blocking oh, okay. and everything right. I am a member of SAG-AFTRA and I, I'm yeah. always renewing my my card just to be, mm -hmm. be part of the union. Yeah. You never know when something's gonna pop up. My life oh, yeah. really took a drastic change during the lockdown. And um, I gained custody of one of my kids back and mm. that really changed a lot of things and putting him mm. first before I put, you know, worked on film and stuff. But I, because I took him in, I had to learn how to work with the film industry in a different way. Cause Ooh. you know, not everybody will allow me to have him with me at places uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. I do have photographers from my old photo shoots that mm. always ask, how's your son doing? Are you going to bring him to the shoot? And um, good, good, I'm, I'm good. really glad that they, they're okay yeah. with someone with autism. So. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me uh, more about the film that you recently did. Uh, just a glimpse of what the story is and w what um, was the message. Well, we were given a subject matter because each film festival, there's subject matters that you have to kind of guidelines that you have to go under. And it was, it was just a, it was a subject matter of, we had to put the story as if people think it's something else. I'm trying to think what that topic is, but they think it's something else. And so when they're watching the video, they think the ending is going to be t something totally different. And what I did Ooh. is I made a video and a script about how um, a news reporter, because I have all the stuff in my house. I'm in my multimedia room. I'm kind of blocking off my fabric right now with this thing. But I have okay. a green screen right here. And we I made need it a tour. We need a tour. <laughs> in, in, whenever I know. I, what it was, I made a, I made a, did a green screen and I pretend I was a news right, reporter. Oh, and, okay, okay. and I interviewed somebody in their home. I did the video and the script over there at their house. Mm -hmm. And I, I did all the graphics and stuff. And I, I'm, I was interviewing a book of the week from like the Chicago news or whatever. Okay. And like the good morning thing. And I, I, oh, yeah, I, I, guess. I did, I, I think I did okay, but um, I interviewed somebody and he, everybody thinks I'm interviewing somebody for a cookbook and ends up that this guy's dogs are the names of food and it was a children's book about his dogs and he's a vegetarian and it goes crazy and he's just and i mean i got a lot of applause and oh, i didn't get wow. any awards or anything but it was the experience it i was learned experience. something i really yeah. learned something and that's the mm. whole thing for me it's like i learned and so yeah. now i know what i can do better next time mm. you know and stuff like yeah, that but, i mean yeah it all ties in with my education and editing um i I have two college degrees, one in psychology, one in studio art. And yeah, I studied yeah, a lot yeah, of God. graphics and stuff like that when I was in college. So yeah, I yeah. to edit my own videos I, and stuff. I guess everything summed up uh, whatever experience you had, you used everything in that one film. I guess the experience matters a lot when you are going all in for your own production. Uh, even it is a short film, I guess mm -hmm. it takes a lot to make a film. You know, it takes a lot to, you know, just edit a five minutes film and then uh, show it to people and make sure that message is right. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of a kind of a journey in in, in the making also. Uh, so every four or five years. I just want to jump back to you in Oregon, where you lived in a farm and the moment where you got introduced to art, design. Your father was in military and your mother taught you uh, of art and design and your father taught you about soon. So tell me, take us back to your childhood where all these things were happening. What was gay like back in her childhood? Back as a child? Um, well, so, some of my earliest memories, even just living on a farm, it was not the farm experience, although I do miss the animals. It was my, my mom always helping me with memorizing my lines. I remember bringing a script home from school and not just being a sugar plum fairy because after doing that Christmas performance and realizing mm -hmm. that's something that I really love 
it's just it was one thing after another and I didn't have to audition for these school plays they just gave me the roles and oh, it was wow. it was just a fun experience but hmm. it's like something that you connect with when you're on the stage it's not it's not just the people and the reactions and stuff it's just as a performer I think you just feel like you're that's where you're supposed to be you know yeah. it's just on stage and and sometimes you're you're that light in someone else's life or you're you're that connection but it's not just that it's you're doing something for yourself like everybody that goes to work every day they yeah they, you, they you hopefully see. they enjoy their job yeah if someone likes so, so, to be a teacher or, or a caretaker yeah, i mean that's yeah, me yeah. me is being on the stage being on the stage so tell me how you know it's it's really early at age of five you played a uh, sugar bomb fairy so Tell me how you got, uh, you know, uh, that attachment towards acting. Was it something like inner you? Were you an introvert or how you got connected to, okay, I love whatever this is. And then you started, okay, I love this part. I love to be in the part. I love to be in the play. And then you became excellent at it. So where uh, the connection happened? I don't know if there was a connection. I think sometimes you're just born with something. Oh, you're okay. Like you want a reaction, not just a reaction from the world. You want you feel connected to the audience. You just love that reaction that they give mm -hmm. and you love dancing, not just for them, but like, I don't know how to explain it totally. Okay, but right. when my kids change my music in my house, okay, okay, I tell them you better change it back because <laughs> do you like the dishes done? Do you like your laundry folded? Do you like all these things? Because it's just something that you're connected with. It just makes you happy. It just yeah. you go with the flow. It's inside you. It's like when I go on the stage and I'm telling jokes. It's just inside inside you. Um, going on the stage, I didn't know that there was all that kind of performances. We had a TV on the farm. Guess what? It Rabbit ears didn't work half the time. We played outside. <laughs> I'm a Generation X. We played yeah. outside. Um, we got an Atari, but my brother took it over. So if I'm, I'm and we had one television, so am I mm -hmm. going to hang out and wait for that TV? No, I'm going to go outside and play. The only TV mm -hmm. I ever really watched is when I got into high school and I would watch reruns of Little House on the Prairie yeah. um, at five in the morning because six kids in the family. Are you going to have time? Are, are you going to get your turn with the television? No. Okay. So, but for me to connect, how early on did I feel? I think it's just something in you. It just naturally comes at the right time when you're just if you're feeling it on the stage and you, you know you can do this. But the thing yeah. is, I didn't even ever think I could have a career out of it because um, I felt that you had to live like in Hollywood. And I lived in Oregon where, <laughs> and, and you also had to be related to famous people in order to oh, yeah. have mm -hmm. that stardom. I'm not related yeah. to anybody really famous. So but, yeah, I guess it, it was a connection uh, of you towards art and it just happened very naturally that you didn't even realize, okay, I'm getting attracted, attached to this uh, particular thing. And that's really good to know. So uh, tell me about uh, moving to Southern California, you know, uh, that was a big shift for you, I guess. How did this move influence your opportunities, uh, you know, in modeling, acting and what is in filmmaking I didn't, I didn't do it right away I, I was having kids and going to school at the same time I raised them while I went to college but um, I did do a few commercials and performed in a few things even after my first child was born and then it was more more commercials for like local stores and stuff like that where I was living so, you so wouldn't know in high like, school now well, not just high mm -hmm. school. I mean, I got married when I was what 21 years old, and then I had my first kid at 23. And I didn't. Whoa. I, I I did a bunch of those like little commercials here and there, performed in little performances. I was in like the musical mm -hmm. Cats for the Broadway show, yeah. but I was a background dancer. Um, okay. But I didn't moving to California. I really didn't get back into it until I finished my education well, it was towards the end of getting my bachelor's degree. And my kids, I had three kids at that time. And what are you um, saying? I felt, so, so, so. go ahead. So you're saying three kids and then you moved to California? No, I had one kid, we moved to California, one. but I graduated okay. college oh. and I had three kids. I had two more kids as, after I moved to California. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, I mean, I was just at the, 
end of where I was graduating in 2013, I started getting back into modeling and, 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 um, at lookbooks. Um, I posted a few pictures and then they got a few likes and mm -hmm. I just wanted to see where I was with it because I was getting more yeah. compliments as I got older. Yeah. I'm like, what can I do with this? Uh -huh. Um, and I didn't really want to push it too far, but um, in a big chunk of my marriage, it was it was really pushed. He was making a lot of appointments for me, and I ended up and he was he was the one posting a lot of stuff online. But I ended yeah. up um, one of my followers because I I knew how to work social media and knew how to pull mm -hmm. everybody on at the time. But social media was a bit new. It wasn't yeah yeah it, wasn't it was what it is today. Yep yep yep. And I, I got a huge following. I could just post a picture and within seconds I had 400 likes on it. And I was like, wow, I could really, really do this. But yeah. he was posting that stuff. And when I was doing that, and that's what probably leads me into doing the Kevin Sorbo film. Mm. The Kevin Sorbo film where I play Mrs. Trosper. Um, I got asked to be I, in that movie. I, I did not audition for it. It's not my best, best movie I've been in. Okay. But um a fan reached out to me he goes i auditioned for this movie and they said i get to pick out my own wife would you like to play my wife in the movie and i'm like sure i'll be there wow that's good <laughs> and they were filming in so, california so here i am in california so, uh tell me one thing your pictures are amazing it looks uh amazing okay tell me about how you got into modeling uh how that journey started for you because you, uh, you know, in school, in school phase was more about acting. And then you moved out to high school. You got married, I guess. How uh, that fashion thing, you know, how you got into modeling, how that journey fashion? started, I guess. Well, within the fashion industry, see, I always made my own clothes, my own prom dresses and stuff like that. My dad taught me how to sew. And okay. um, I always have made my kids, my girls their dresses and, and stuff like that. And when I... I, I'm trying to think here. Okay. My daughter, okay. my daughter and I, she was just a toddler and we were asked to be in a mommy and me fashion show. And, Ooh. and I, I, I just remember that now I, I didn't realize, you know, that was okay, part of okay, history. Go on, go on. So I like we, to hear that. We, we were asked to be in a mommy and me fashion show and walk, you know, on the runway, just her and I, and mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty neat. Um, yeah. More than neat, but I mean, those little, little things that I did, but when I had a breast augmentation after I had my third child and I ended up doing a lot of swim and suit modeling, see, and that's when it comes back in. And I only went in to do swim suit modeling. And then I did fashion and lookbooks and stuff like that, because I wanted to know how to run in the fashion industry. Yeah. I wanted to know both ends. Mm -hmm. I ended up meeting designers um, learning what not to do and what to do. And I still made a lot of mistakes. Um, okay. I owned a company called K lane exclusive and, and I custom made clothes for, for red carpet events for, for a few celebrities. And, mm -hmm. um, then my divorce hit, but yeah, I mean, I did all those little things. I went in fashion lookbooks. My, yeah. one of my friends, Savan for the SSS apparels. I'm not sure if she still runs that, but that was one of my, my foot in the door kind of companies that I wanted to yeah. you know, learn good and bad. And I did, she helped me do a lot of modeling and she helped me meet a lot of people. Yeah. And I'm not exactly sure. I could just like reminisce here of um, so, got it. different okay. modeling experiences I've had. <laughs> so I, Tell me, tell me one thing throughout this till 2024, how much of your career was involved in fashion designing and how much was it in films and acting? Like, can we draw in percentage? I guess maximum of. Well, I have a lot. In a, there's a lot of experience I've done in a lot of areas. you got to know that the fashion industry and film and music, yeah. they're all intertwined. Yeah. Because yeah. people are looking at the, the fashion that someone's wearing in a movie and music videos. And and then, yeah. you know, it's it's all together. It's all um, I, I'm a member of SAG-AFTRA, but I, and I work really, really hard to do that, to become part of that union. I worked on a set with Tig Notaro and doing work with her, but I was, I was her stand-in, mm -hmm. but I, um, SAG-AFTRA was right there and I was signing on and I worked there for a whole week and 
when I went to the union office, um, a, a nice portion of my my um, union, the whole f- the fee to get in was already taken care of. So okay. somebody must have liked me on one of the sets that I worked really hard on. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Tell me, uh, I guess uh, I'd like to focus more on your acting journey. Uh, so just for a curiosity, which is the best film that you think uh, was really memorable for you? So well, we can have- I worked quality. more on, on television shows. Okay. Um, it's nothing incredibly exciting, but I, my favorite show that I've ever been on is um, The New Girl. It was okay. season seven, okay. episode one. Mm-hmm. I was featured on that. And I, I, I remember being so excited just to be on set with Zoe Deschanel and she was just so tired and they always cut at a certain time because all the people on that, that set were parents and they wanted to yeah. be home with their kids. So that it was just, I thought it was going to be something very exciting to be on, yeah. but everybody was a parent and they were just tired. And, you know, every time you said cut, it's like, okay, you know, they're all yawning and everything. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So uh, we will now focus on your acting journey as a part of preparing for a role or a character or an audition. So uh, what's your prep like when you receive a script and how you prepare for any role? Well, I first read over the script and sometimes mm-hmm. there's always details of of um, what kind of character it is, what kind of mood is the setting around the character and if there's an accent. I mean, I've I've had to do accents like an Irish accent, like of a mountain woman one time. And that, okay. that was interesting, but I, I have an older daughter that's 24, my oldest child. Okay. And she has been great of reading the script with me. Even if she's for a whale send her something. And I said, let's go on zoom or, or FaceTime and let's, let's, <laughs> let's knock this script out. I'm like, yeah. you owe me. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh, you, okay. you, 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 you lend your kids money all the time. And so, you know, here we go. Yeah. This is what we do, but it's just, you gotta, you gotta put yourself in that mindset. It's like, you're a, mm. you're a method actor and you gotta do that. And when I was taking classes with Lee Garrington and she's a table reading person, but mm-hmm. she really focuses on helping us get into that character, into that mood and the mode. And sometimes I have to put everything around me as it, as it pertains to that character. For example, okay. when I was talking about that Irish, that Irish yeah, accent I, and stuff, yeah. I put everything around me like that. I do have family, um, a background mm. in, from Irish, Ireland and stuff like that. But I also put my GPS with an Irish accent. And I would just practice it because the Irish on the GPS, it's not going to tell you to turn right into the parking lot. It's going to tell you to turn right in the car park. It's not, oh. it's, it's not a parking lot over there. Okay. It tells wow. you even on the GPS that it's, so it's like everything you got to surround yourself. And I would always look up doing research of different types of dialects of things because you, yeah. you go to another country and just like in the United States and here in, in America, we have different types of English. Um, yeah. Different accents. Yeah, I get accents a lot of accents so and you got to get do southern accent for some of the roles that you auditioned for so you just have to submerge yourself in hearing it so you can you know have the right and correct accent when you're, you're trying to portray that character got it so do you have any acting exercise that you prepare for uh, you know when when you're preparing for a role or an audition is there any exercise that you do any exercise that i do I just try to meditate a lot. Okay, you meditation. Know, do breathing. Um, you know, try to not surround myself with any negative situation. You know, even if you know, because sometimes you do know when a negative situation yeah. is going to come about. So you just kind of try yeah. to avoid and stay positive. And for me, it's just breathing. You got to just breathe and just release all the negative energy, so you're not tensed up. Because you got to, uh, you just got to be relaxed. Like it's something natural right. to you. Not naturally. Okay. Uh, so how is the thing with you with audition? Is it all self tape or you go out and do the audition? Uh, before like the lockdown, mm-hmm. before the lockdown, it was audition. I can go in to half, half my auditions were going in and auditioning at the studio, at the, the location where they send you. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's all self tape majority, it's about 90% self-tape. of it is self tape. Yeah. So how do you prepare for self tape? You know, where you are, 
alone in the room i guess uh, and when you are preparing for it so what's your prep like when you receive a script and when they send you some instruction hey this is what you are looking for uh, how you go ahead with the the prep and then putting yourself on camera well it depends on how quickly they want it <laughs> cuz sometimes oh, yeah, they'll give it to you a day or two before ah. and so i am i here my my back studio in my house i have a i have a green screen or a white wall mm-hmm. but you have to make sure it is filmed right cuz sometimes they give you instructions sometimes they don't sometimes they want to um they want you to present it a certain way when you're cutting and editing the the audition that you're setting it in cuz sometimes they want yeah. a full body shot of you yeah. and they want you to zoom out and sometimes zoom, i don't yeah. have that yeah, accessory that to do that yeah. like if mm-hmm. i have another person most of the time in my house mm-hmm. at this moment is just my yeah. adult son with yeah. autism and i so i just have to cut and edit and make sure that it's properly put on there but if i if it's the same same day or a few days before and i don't have time to really memorize yeah i have a screen in the back or i also have a script reader on my computer but usually Tell they don't know, like man. you and it and they, it listens to your voice and it rolls what is it like a teleprompt teleprompt yeah yeah yes but but sometimes they don't like because i've taken the classes in the actors lab and they teach you how to look at a, a different angle because sometimes they just don't want your eyes right there into the camera they want them off to the yeah. side mm-hmm. and you know to roll down but i also have these boards that i put up and i print it out because sometimes i have to say okay my name is kay lane and i'm going to be reading the script today in my glasses so oh, you have wow. to tell them you know because they yeah. don't want the character in the glasses but this is how you're going to get it for right now oh okay so i guess it's it's a lot of hectic process uh, even though it's self taping because there may be somewhere they're looking for a long shot and wide shot maybe somewhere they're looking just for the close up and you have to adjust all of that and being a single person the majority of the be, auditions that you're right here just, they want just your best. this part they just want yeah 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 the middle of you i can't see yeah, where my till, hand is but the middle of you yeah. your head till, the half till waist we can say uh mm-hmm. it's it's basic but i guess there's a lot of adjustment even when when you have limited time you know just 24 to 48 hours and these are the things i guess you have to go through a lot of adjustments and make sure uh, you deliver everything properly i guess uh that's that's the uh, big challenge with self taping i guess okay so uh, now one more thing i'd like to know is Uh, i guess you've been through a uh, lot of auditions and lot of uh, on tv shows how does it feel when you get rejected when the call doesn't fall in you hey i guess we are looking for someone else how you react and has it changed over time i don't react bad <laughs> so i just feel that the, i don't feel like it's for me you got to know i okay. get why well, i got a lot of auditions before the lockdown when i got had to go in i would get a lot of auditions and they would be looking for like a mom or a lawyer or a doctor and and yeah. when it's a mom i and they're just trying to match the family up when they're bringing me in if i look uh-huh. good with they already have a husband picked up they already have the kids okay. picked up if i don't match i don't match and to me it's always like there's always something better out there coming yeah. up i don't know what it is or if it's now because i mean i've had scripts written for me but then there's a lot of things that like the lockdown happens yeah, and yeah. the script gets sold to someone else and then you don't get the part so god god you just have to put you, in your heart and soul that there's something better for you and i don't i don't hold a grudge on that and some uh, people do I, and some people get really upset but you just have to tell yourself that it's just not meant for you something better is probably going to come and i don't have that mindset all the time of something better is going to come but i always tell myself that you know if you don't get it it's not for you exactly you know I guess, you don't match yeah. up with the the whole scene the energy of the people you know i mean th- this is something that comes with comes with experience of being in that environment this is something that comes up with uh, being in with those people and uh, i guess you kind of came very clear with this mentality that okay this is how this whole things work up and if there's if something is not for me i mean it a lot of things fall into places to uh, choose someone other and not me and at the same time the vice versa where you got chosen because i guess this is perfect for me i guess these guys are looking for me 
and i guess uh, that's that's where you uh, you make this very simple for you where things when things don't don't work out okay maybe there's something else that's going to happen and not this one i guess uh, and that's that's really good to know uh, you are very clear with how things roll with you so uh, now tell me one thing is uh, what's the most important thing you've learned about acting after going through all the workshops and doing all the method acting workshops even the cold uh, reading and being with actors and uh, you know being in that environment what's the one important thing that you learned about acting the one th important thing that's uh, there's a lot of important things it's <laughs> you got to be yourself you can't be someone else um mm. Surround yourself with like-minded people, or you're not going to go far. You got to be on. You're on the same mission. You're not in competition with them. You're you're like them. That you're a team. Um, I wish I wish I could give better advice, but just to be yourself, be not yourself. to not to be someone else that you're not. But of course, it's all about acting, so you are going to be someone else. Yeah. But you can't get too far in your head because I've seen other people that get way too far. And it's, you know, you, you go to Los Angeles and that's a yeah. on everybody's hit mindset that they're going to become this famous actor. Encouraged. And I think yeah. a good chunk of those people that are homeless in Los Angeles are, ha, ha, went there for the dream and it didn't happen. Yeah. And, it, that's, that's you know, being a method cool. actor, when you're, when you're a method actor, because you put yourself into that mindset and um, that being a method actor goes really deep with your emotions, connecting with those things. And it could, I've been on set where they want you to really cry and you're getting, you're, you're going to that one spot that, that really pulls something from some emotional part of your life just to get you to that point. Oh, and then yeah. you can't get out of it for a couple of weeks. So just, it's, it's, just, it's tough. It's tough for you. It is. It really is. Well done. And I guess I can see that, uh, uh, roles have really deep impact on your life, whichever I guess you play it may be, because it takes a lot of you to go out. And with method acting, you try to get inside the character's veins, you know, just to find out what's going on. And that's where I guess to get that out of your body, it's it takes a lot of you. So um, what what's your favorite type of character to play? Uh, there may be choices that you'd love to play. Okay, I got this character. Is there something that with you that, okay, I'd like to play this kind of character? A genre. Um, the kind of genre I like. Yeah. Oh, I would like just to play some comedic mom or whatever, and be one of those mom things with, Comedy. like those other comedian, female comedians in in movies. It doesn't. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, like, um, no, I'm not. It, it's not serious. It's it's something that you you know, as uh, like something that you dream of. So, see, I'm not saying that. Okay, you. I know you are an actress, and I know you like to be whatever comes to you. Okay, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about you know, growing up, you watch certain films. Growing up, you watch certain films in certain genres, and uh, and and when we grow up and we have some control over our stuff, that's where you know, like, okay, I like to be this kind of you know, uh, I like to play this kind of character, or I like to play or be in some kind of genre which is like this that's how i place that question well what i really like um if you did see my house i have costumes in every closet um my favorite character that i watched is mrs mazel i really like okay. mrs mazel okay and i have 1950s dresses with petticoats and everything and the oh. pearl necklaces and the long sleeve whoa, 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 and whoa. the gloves and everything yeah i love oh. that stuff but I love I love a lot of different costumes because I I'm a country girl at heart and I I have a history also in dance and I love going country mm -hmm. dancing so I mean anything I could pull anything out of a hat because sometimes they as an actor they want you to have other talents too that that you can yeah. bring to the set with you because you you might need to be um, an old lady or a mom or even a guy that crochets mm -hmm. or something and you got to know how to do that I can crochet so I can I these Whoa. little extra little things. Always helps, add, helps. yeah. Add yeah. to your acting thing because I can dance, I yeah. can swing dance, I can two step. I've been on um, a set with Eric Roberts, and the, it was a country scene. I'm not, I can't remember what movie that was, but um, 
it was a they had a, they had a, like a honky tonk bar and i had all all the stuff ready for that so i had wow. i had to like dance the two step on just in the background and um i've um played um dancing parts and 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 um the background of movies too because i really i love yeah. dancing i really do it's, i guess uh, whatever you have something which is additional can be used in the character and i guess uh, that's one thing that you think really is helpful for you and really helped you in whatever characters like you are uh, extra prepared for what's going to come to you and that that really helps you out with uh, whatever extra skills it's kind of add on that you give to the character or mm -hmm. to the situation it's 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 Don't just focus cool. i'm going to be a great actor focus on the skills <laughs> that you can bring to the table too <laughs> yeah 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 good good and uh here's the thing now i'm looking for questions well uh there's going to be a rapid fire with you soon but before that rapid fire i'd like to jump on a place where i guess you got married and then there was uh, kids and our whole family moved to uh california i guess you guys moved to california but there is a part where you went through a surgery i guess tell me about well, that part because i guess that i oh, this, i had a hysterectomy you want to know about that one <laughs> yeah yeah go well, on well i because i graduated like college to... and i was mm -hmm. um i i graduated college after you know let's see i think my youngest child was about three or four years old okay and i graduated from cal state san bernardino i graduated with two bachelor's degrees one in psychology and one in art but right as the week of my graduation i got really sick and i i had to have a hysterectomy and um within the year after having that going through all the women like stuff like menopause and stuff like that yeah. because I was surgically it's called surgical menopause when you're forced into it mm -hmm. um that's when my divorce hit but I was also bedridden and I because I had some other complications that were were in there I love yeah. I love how our bodies work but we need all these little devices mm -hmm. but I as being on bed rest I saw a lot of things that were going on in my marriage what was okay. happening to me um even though I had a husband that let me model it was more not let more let, letting it was kind of like he was kind of pushing me into it he was pushing me into yeah. every aspect of doing all these things because he did not want me around the house there was other stuff going on behind my back going to school the drive was two and a half hours away to go to college but i couldn't be in the house with him unless i had a degree and he was just pushed pushed it down my throat so every every um every day before and after I had my first child, he'd always put an application, college application. I had to be educated to be married to him. Um, I'm trying. I think I'm going off on a tangent, but during, yeah. I mean, I, I had surgery, and within all of that, and even coming out after the surgery and, and seeing all that kind of stuff, I still, at that time. I was nominated Latin model of the year. It was a company that was trying to become more like what Spanglish. They're trying to integrate. Yeah. And they, 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 I got nominated to be Miss April, Abril in Spanish. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I still was after even healing and after kind of coming out of bed rest, I still had that opportunity. Those opportunities were still coming in. I have some crazy stories about the model. I heard but... about, I heard about uh, the article that I read and that was really disturbing. First of all, I don't know you, you'd like to talk on that, but uh, I guess that surgeries, the period that you mentioned, I guess, and the marriage part, where I guess you found out something was going on. Uh, how, 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 how did it broke you and how, what was that period like for you? Everything comes to an end or what was going on? Because you had a family, you had kids at that time. I had and family pretty... and I, I didn't know how much control was happening to me in my marriage. I had to, I, I didn't know until, I mean, I came home from my therapy or our church that we were going to, um, the bishop of the church said for him to go to therapy and me to go to therapy. And then we'd come together. Well, I'd come home one night and the therapy that the, my 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 ex husband my husband at the time was telling me that I needed to tell him everything that was going on and I had I graduated from college with psychology he thought okay. oh she's got a degree in psychology she's probably diagnosing me in the in the therapy session and he was just yelling at me about how I I was just diagnosing him and saying what medication he needs to be on and he always inflicted what he was doing to me onto me he would yell at me about it because for a while I found out he was 
convince me I, I was always sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the doctor ha was fed up. She he goes, who's telling you that you're sick? You come in every week. Why oh. do, why do you why are you saying this? And and I'm like, I don't know. It goes one minute you're happy, and the next minute you're saying that you got you have this. It was it was just a thing of control. Okay. I mean, I had my hysterectomy. Um, mm -hmm. I found I found out a lot of things that were going on behind my back, mm -hmm. and I and I I had to sit there and just think. Why is he doing these things to me? Because I, after you're in bed and watching everything happen, and then he, he's yelling at you to take your medication yeah. on on days of the week that it's so he remembers to put extra pills in your pill case. It was just like yeah. a whole entire thing. Why is he doing this to me? Why does he always want me to change? He doesn't like the way I am. Okay. And coming into that perspective. And putting my foot down when I came home from therapy that one day, and he want he was yelling at me. He did a few awful things in front of our kids that night, but the police had to come. I had put a restraining order on him. And when it came to that point of having to do that, my life just fell apart from the modeling and everything. Yeah. I was still getting the jobs coming in. I was um, going to this shoot magazine shoot for this other Miss Hollywood thing. And they were, you know, doing these photos, this photo shoot at the beach, this one area. And there was a few paparazzis there. And when I showed up and I was just in tears, I was just, just crying. And they go, we want to use you in the shoot, but we're going to have to reschedule because you're not all together. Yeah. And the reason why I was also not all together is because I was also designing clothes for people. Not there was a few celebrities. There was models yeah. I was doing for LA music awards and I show up. And at that moment, because my attorney said that I could take my daughter out of the county mm -hmm. and and I wasn't supposed to. And I had to pay my attorney to fix the problem too because I was going to be arrested when I came back. Oh. And I was just crying in tears because my ex-husband sent sent them after me and and I called my attorney to fix it but I was just so in tears. I was dressing Charlene Tilton. She is um she's a beautiful blonde that's in the first Dallas and she okay. works with people with kids with autism. She does an autism theater. I'm not sure if she does it at this point mm -hmm. now, but at that point mm -hmm. when I designed her address, yeah. that's what was going on. So I was, I was like for my divorce and surgery uh, and, and designing clothes and then going to a photo shoot. It all was happening all at once. It was. And, and there was a paparazzi at that shoot and I was just had crying. Yes. I was, here's yeah. my mm -hmm. divorce. So I get home that night, which I lived about three hours from the shoot. Mm -hmm. And that moment I realized my kids need me more than anything. So I took and my social media down because I yeah, had that's hundreds, right. I had hundreds of messages of men from men telling me, you know, when your divorce is final, we'll take it to the courthouse. When your divorce is final, you and I would have beautiful children. Um, it was just harassment, harassment, or I was I was at fault for my divorce. I had the worst stuff said to me, and I'm the sinner, you know, it's like it was, it was just really bad. And at that point I, I realized that my kids needed me more than that. So I took my social media down for a good, good time period. Yeah. I saw that. I, and I didn't do, and I, I think that kind of ruined me at the same time because I wasn't able to, when I got back into social media, it wasn't the same anymore. Yeah. I had a hard time yeah. connecting. It wasn't like the old yeah. Facebook. Yeah, I knew the old Facebook. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 I, once I saw that article, once I read that article, and then I saw your social media before even knowing about you, uh, that's why I thought like, okay, she is really doing well. There's a lot of articles about Kayleen and her social media is completely off. Then I come to know about this article that I sent you day before, and I thought, okay, this is disturbing. First of all, at the same time, this is something kind of called as downfall to the great career that she was having. And I guess you were in the middle of whatever you were doing. It was filled with, you know, uh, fashion design, you're dressing people mm -hmm. at the same my time. You're on the he, held yeah, on to and... my, he held on to my fashion line during the divorce. Yeah. And in the state of California, if you create a company within your marriage, even if they had nothing to do with it, half of it's theirs. So he made sure it died. And I, and Oh. I, I couldn't do anything. It was connected to my name, so anything if I used under K Lane or anything like that, um, he would get half of it, and he'd always make 
if I was going to a set. Um, so did you do anything? Did you work anywhere? He'd always want half of my paycheck. And so I said, no, I didn't use my stage name. I'm not. Oh. So I, 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 I got it back in 2018, totally dead. And, and then um, just this last year, I renewed my LLC. I had a lawyer look everything over to make sure no one can take it from me. Okay. So that's, that's hopefully special. within the next year or so, a lot of things will be coming back to me. I'm not sure if I want to do fashion right away. I want uh -huh. to build up a name first and then okay. have that one of my streams on the side. Got it. Because I, the, the reason I even pushed out that question is to get something that I like to know, okay, what can happen and what extreme things can happen to someone who is doing a lot of things and cannot expect something fishy is going on. At the same time, uh, it is something that can help others uh, your story, the story of uh, have happening of abuse at the same time, domestic violence and uh, control, having control over their own intellectual property or whatever that is, and then it getting distributed and for no reason. But to go through that and to find yourself at zero or dead is kind of a biggest shift that can happen. Being in LA and then seeing this happening in front of your eyes, uh, the thing that you built from your childhood then over the years, finding something that's going to, you know, crash or going to zero, uh, that's that's terrible. And then you uh, picked up uh, slowly after 2018, I guess, that's the period where you really started to figure out things with your children. Today, I'm talking to you, I, 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 I can feel 10% of I'm talking to an artist, 90% I'm talking to a mom uh, who is <laughs> managing her kids, a family, and then trying to be here because this is what she was for, I guess, 20, 25 years. And suddenly something changed and she's trying to build her up again. So that's what I see uh, when, I talk, when I'm talking to you. Uh, and I, I, I can see certain things that you really got great connections. So within a few years, I guess, within one or two years, you are going back up there with your design. I guess that's your pro uh, with design and modeling. You know, uh, that's, that's going to be back with you. I guess you got guys figuring out that for you. But this story, I really want it to be out here on the podcast because it's maybe something that will help a lot of people, but also make people aware this kind of things may happen or will happen. Or even uh, a, a one person can get aware of this. So uh, first of all, I hope you go well after this, uh, you know, something. Well, I have uh, something else. I don't know if you want me to share, but I have this. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot about this. Okay, I forgot about this. <laughs> now we are jumping on. Uh, we are really running short, uh, but yeah. we'll try to figure out uh, with uh, your autobiography. So now coming on to the point where uh, we will now talk only about your autobiography, but tell me about when you thought of like after or before, what was the period where you thought of, okay, I need to write this because there's a lot of struggles going on to write a book. You need a time. You know, it's not just happens where you just thought of it and that then it happens. It, you take your whole trauma peri period aside and then you come up with the healing portion and then you decide. So tell me. Well, it, took me a, it took me a good 10 years because a lot of this started in 2014, 15. I didn't realize a lot of stuff. I had a lot of control over me. Mm -hmm. And it took me 10 years to say I'm okay. I, I'm going to I'm surviving. I'm I, I'm more than surviving. I'm I, I'm okay because there was a lot of trauma that happened and it still does. And it you makes can showcase people, the book if, if it's possible. You can just put it in front. But yeah, um, it's, it's just called Stronger Than I Know. Yeah. And it's just it's about my trials all the way even from how things stemmed when I was a child. Because you get so used to that lifestyle of who's kind of beating you down yeah. and how I overcame things and the things that I, I mean, I conquered um, the situations that I, I dove through, but all, all in the end, it's okay to have therapy. Therapy is mm -hmm. not a bad thing. And I come from a generation that is, is just don't have therapy. Um, Generation X. I mean, you just kind of you just kind of work through it in other ways. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing coming along with you. A lot of things keep kept on changing over the years. With, yes. With war, yeah. Go on, go on. Now tell us about uh, the book and uh, what's included. Well, in yeah, it's just about um, how I ended up in my my marriage and mm -hmm. the things that happened in my marriage, but it also connects where my how I am with my father. 
um, but I, how I overcame all that stuff. Um, it was very traumatic writing because you go back and you edit and there's something you don't want to read again. Um, but it you was want that to you because something happened to you. Yeah. You know, cause there was a modeling experience that I had that, cause he pushed it down my throat. Um, I came home and I told him because it was for someone's catalog and they wanted to get all the models in, but I had finals and stuff. I was going to school. And so I go there at late at night, right after I get done with my last final and for the photo shoot and the photographer, he can't keep his hands off me. I usually have an escort. I didn't have an, my escort at the time because it's not a, a safe world out there in the industry. And I get home and I told my, my husband at the time what this photographer was doing to me. And when the photo shoot, the pictures came, came up and he's, my, my ex did this. All he did was like, I really like how he turned out. You need to get more work with this photographer. Even after I said, this is what happened to me. I didn't have anybody there to protect me. I, I'm not looking for someone that's a jealous husband in my life. I'm looking for somebody that say, Hey, this is not right. Let me take care of you and I'll take care of the situation. But I didn't have anybody even protecting me in the industry. It was always push, push, push. I didn't have my husband protecting me. And then it was push, push, push. But when it came to when the divorce happened, he used all those things against me. Like I'm the one who went, I wanted it. I was wanted it. I wanted um, to have those oh. experiences. It was my fault. That's why guys like me, it's easy to point the finger at the pretty woman, you know? And I mean, there's a lot of things that there's little stories in the book that even from when I, from when I was designing clothes for LA Fashion Week, not LA Fashion Week, but the um, LA, um, the LA Music Awards and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm up for nights just designing the clothes. And then um, it's just awful things that I'm feeding my kids McDonald's through the drive through because I'm sewing every day. And then um, oh. the girl that's taking the order won't take her order and then come to find out my ex-husband's doing something with that person. And, and, I'm being told I'm crazy for days just because the McDonald's lady is telling me, telling him that I'm crazy. And I'm like, no, I have mascara running down my face because I'm not sleeping for days because I'm sewing. I mean, it was just these little weird stories that I've triumphed over that I'm not apologizing to people anymore. I'm still apologizing little bits here and there when I'm having a down day, but yeah, all these little things I've learned from, I'm not mm -hmm. sure exactly. I'm going on tangents right now, but you know, has made me a better person. That's little stories in there, just little things of, you know, from my childhood, from the Mormon church, because I grew up as a Mormon and, um, and overcoming that. I'm not, a, I'm not a member of the church anymore, but I think that played a big role in my marriage. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I don't know exactly what, where to go with this, but you'd have to find okay. out. Yeah, just just one thing I'd like to know more about is uh, tell me about your dad. Tell me about how he impacted you. Because I guess whatever you're doing, the major impact is in suing. Okay, so I guess uh, even learning that things, he was in military. Okay, and that's not mm -hmm. a small thing. Uh, what kind of impact, what kind of teaching uh, you got from him and impact that you got from him and you still well, remember? I guess that's in the book. Well, there's, it's good and bad what I got from my father. I mean, yeah, my dad taught me how to sew and he was really started my, the fashion. Um, and he was raised by a girl, I mean, by his mom and around a lot of girls and foster girls in the home. Um, but I also was always afraid of my dad at the same time. Um, okay. Um, I'm not exactly where to go with that because he, it, it could be, I would be eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at the table one day as just a little kid, a little kid. And um, mm -hmm. he'd ask me a question and I would know a big word. And it really meant like if the word was communication or whatever, and I'd always get in trouble. I'd be hounded for just knowing big words. He never really liked anybody smarter than him. If I'm, I don't talk to my father this day, but when I, when I was, he would, if I, my education ever came up because he needed to know some information, I go, well, this is what I know. And this is how we got to play this out because I was a life skills coach for school. I, I used to work um, at a middle school and a high school and I'm trying to help him solve an issue. If I bring up my education, I'm in trouble. 
I'm still in trouble this day with him if I, I don't talk to him, but he doesn't want anybody smarter. He's like, he yells at me, do not bring up your education around me. And that's in the book too. That's about how he doesn't want anybody to be smarter than him, especially women. My parents aren't married. They were married for 25 years and it lasted that long just because of the of church and religion and the, the impact. I, I, for I the thought impact it was of, if. <laughs> my dad though, the impact on me, I think I, I learned what I don't want to be around and what I want to be around. My, my yeah. dad's a wonderful tailor. That's the only way I have a good conversation when I was younger <laughs> was if we talked about sewing and also, uh, when I had a degree in art, I welded through college, and he was a government welder. And he was also mm -hmm. in the military, but I didn't bring that up. But our conversations only has to be based around subjects that he knows. Oh, not okay. how I'm doing, not how the kids are doing. Mm -hmm. It's only what he knows. That's it. Got and it. it's really kind of sad to live in that small little box. Mm. Yeah. So uh, tell me, who were your, your people who had your back? Were there any? Because throughout the story, I haven't... Uh, it's, oh, it's my, Laura... my grandfather. My grandfather. Your grandfather. My Yes, I, okay. I loved my grandfather so much. Um, my dad's dad, when I was in high school, I lived with my grandparents my senior okay. year. I got in a lot of trouble. I was just trying to fight for a voice and I got kicked out of my parents' house and I lived on the streets and my grandparents took me in and I became very close with my grandfather. Um, he had a few strokes, but I, I, read, um, I read books to him and every day after school, I would either do, do that or I would sit and watch old reruns of Cagney and Lacey. And that's one one um, show that I think they should remake or into a movie is Cagney and Lacey about two women cops um, from the eighties. But that was his favorite show. Um, he would sing, he would try to get his voice back because he had strokes, he would sing church hymns. But just to walk into a room and his eyes would just light up every time he would see me, it just gave me a great deal of comfort. I just loved him. I still love him. I, I and I, and get all teary. I, I, I do miss my grandfather. I guess there are someone who really had your back. I'm really happy to know that. You know, throughout I was like, oh man, what's going? What's what's happening with her? And then uh, it's really good to know that uh, you had your grandfather with you. You know, helping, supporting, uh, and you know, someone who had your back. That's really great to know. Uh, look, your journey and the things that you're doing are really. An ex like it, it, it's something that is everything has a story for you. Like every period, everything, even in the year, you have something that's really going on, and it's all of roller coaster. It's it's not a similar phase, and I guess uh, that's what makes your story really interesting. Uh, now, first of all, this this book to every listener, uh, her book by the name. Uh, please show the uh, book for okay. the one last time. Uh, it's available on Amazon, Stronger Than I Know by Kayleen. It's autobiography and it's available on Amazon. The links will be mentioned in the description so you can go and check that out and uh, read the book. Uh, first of all, uh, now I guess we have covered the major part of this uh, particular interview. I'd like to have a small little good rapid fire around acting. Okay, So it's something that I'd like to know which is the one that uh, you like the most. Okay, So uh, now we each start the rapid fire here. Who is your biggest inspiration in film industry? Biggest inspiration in the film industry? There's, I have many, but I really love um, Queen Latifah. She's Queen Latifah. She, she's one of my favorites. I have, I have interesting stories. I, okay. I, my, I have a dream that I actually cook a dinner for, for Queen Latifah, and she just loves my <laughs> cooking. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of good, good dream. It's kind of fantasy yes. for you. Okay. But I've always uh, wanted to meet her because I just thought her personality is just sensational in anything that she's ever played in. She's got oh, an attitude. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I guess that puts you in something that you uh, would really love to do in your real life. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, comedy or drama? Comedy. Comedy always. Okay. Great. Well, uh, drama is out there, but comedy is, yeah. But comedy. Okay. Got it. Uh, what's your favorite movie of all time? My favorite movie of all time? Wow, it, it, it changes, but there's there's one. Um, oh gosh, now I can't even remember the name, but it's it's an Irish movie. Um, gosh, I wish I could. 
I could Google it, but it's about a, a whole little town that wins the lottery. And the guy okay, died. You can text me the name later. I'll put the post again. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Stage or screen acting? Oh, it's it's Waking Ned Divine. Waking Ned Waking Divine. Is, Divine. Yes, got I love it, that movie. It just has a funny twist and it has different okay. meanings. Got now, it. what did you say again? Stage or screen acting? Screen acting. Screen acting. Got it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could work with any director, who would it be? could work with any director i've never thought of that just no. just to just one that doesn't jerk your arm around on set <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been on uh, on different ones when i played on picard and and i the director is right there grabbing my arm they're not supposed to touch you <laughs> like, why are you over here we want you over here because i played a scientist oh, on on a okay. the card before um okay good it good. doesn't matter so, to me as long as they're um as long as yeah they're they guess, treat their people nice <laughs> oh that's that's <laughs> you really gotta know in the industry here they're they're yeah you can go both ways mm. and i guess uh it's a lot of where we where you go south i guess for maximum and it really works out very for like one or ten percent where they go north Got uh now which is the next one i'm looking for it uh If you weren't an actress, what would you be? What would I be? You know, I had a hard time even answering this in, in high school because I didn't know what I wanted to be, except I loved performing and I didn't think that was a career. No. Um, I didn't even want to be a teacher. I used to be a life skills coach for a school ah, district, yeah. but yeah. probably just a painter, an artist. I used an to artist. teach... Um, I used to have an art studio and I would teach second through fifth graders out of it, like for summer camp. Um, mm -hmm. I just love um, painting and drawing. And I have, I have a tattoo here on my arm that I drew and they put it on. What's so I that really, about? It's, it's just, it's flowers. I drew the okay. flowers and they put them on it. And I have this one that has a lot of meaning to it, but it's just, I only put stuff on my body that I, I, I created. I don't. Okay. Wow, another artist yeah. worked on me, but I so, love. So you, art. you design it, and then you tell mm -hmm. them to draw that on. Yeah, I went in, and and they even offered me a job, and I'm like, I can't do tattoos on other people. <laughs> if I make a mistake, like then they're gonna come after me. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Okay, that's good to know. Uh, and it's really, uh, I guess, that's where your art thing comes into play. Even the tattoos you want your design to. Make. Artist, fashion. I don't know if not acting. Yeah. What's the best piece of advice you you have received related to acting or overall in this field of media and entertainment? Well, the best piece of advice that I've received, um, I don't know directly, but just to, if the part's not for you, you know, don't dwell on it, really. Oh, okay, okay. That's what I heard in the beginning of this episode. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's been with working with Lee Garrington and, and I mean, a few other people that I've worked with in the industry. It's like, yeah. you know, you just do your best, you put your best foot forward and, you know, you get your callbacks and, and if it's not meant to be, you know, you can't, you can't dwell on it. There's something better out there. There really is. It's that's not meant for you. Good. I guess, uh, this is this is the lighter part of the interview. We went through some really emotional and really serious stuff uh, throughout this, but uh, I guess this kind of light uh, did uh, did lighten some of the whole interview session. Uh, first of all, thank you, thank you, Kay, thank you for being on the show. Uh, thank you for uh, taking out your time. You are really busy with whatever schedule you have as a mom, as an actress, as a designer, whatever. There's a lot of things going on in your life, but. Finally, I thought this would take a month for you to come up with a date, but uh, I'm really glad that you messaged, hey, tell me the time and we can figure out. So it, it's really good that Monday night worked for you. And uh, I'm really happy that whole thing came into play uh, with your movies and the way you perform and the way you started your journey. It is really amazing. Very few people, you know, uh, uh, who go through this, but can come back and bounce back and then uh, be where they really wanted to be even whatever comes into uh, their life even now you are you're with your son who is going through autism and you're trying to figure your life 
out at this moment for you but uh, before that also you went through a lot and it's it's really good to see you someone like you who is fighting against domestic violence at the same time who uh, made sure that you will never give up uh, that's that's that duty you have to, towards life also what i want for people is not just to say there's there of course there's therapy and stuff like that but when you're going through the trauma and they can relate and you know i i'm not the only one who's going through that story you're not the only one that's going through the story the person who's reading the book but i don't want people to forget who they are really i don't and if it takes because i remember just sitting down that one time and and all these things come cr are crashing down and i'm like why doesn't he like this about me why doesn't he like this so i started keeping a list of the things that I liked about myself and I didn't want to lose that. So I don't want people out there to lose, to lose the things they like about themselves and don't let people take those away from you because that's, yeah. that makes you who you are. Yep. Yep. That's true. And uh, now Kate, just help me with the last question. The last part of this interview is you being an artist from last 20 years, 20 plus years, I guess, what advice you'd like to pass on to the artist overall in, various different fields. Uh, what is the advice, one piece of advice that you'd like to put out uh, from your experience to the up and coming new and someone who is stuck in the situation, what advice you'd like to pass on? What advice would I like to give them? Yeah, from oh, your experience. Gosh. There's so much advice. It's just, you gotta be yourself. You can't, you can't let um, a role that you didn't get ruin the rest of your day, the rest of your life, you know, you still got to keep on living and there's always something better out there in the future. If you didn't get one, you know, just keep on practicing. If you, if you see those little qualities that you want in yourself, you know, strengthen them and just keep on, keep on practicing. If you, if you want to be a better method actor, you know, you know, join certain groups, there's groups out there, even on Facebook, that ha are actors, you know, that, you know, want to get together, even if it's not a paid thing or some, a lot of things you have to pay. I mean, just go, go, go to your local theater, let they, they have little performances and stuff and see how you can be a part of that. Just don't give up on yourself. If that's something you love to do. And because I notice within me when there's certain subject matters that I like to talk about that I love of the things that I love to do. Like I love getting reactions from people. I like writing jokes. I like the writing part of the joke and kind of like, let's see how I can get that on stage. There's a light in my eyes compared to other times. So just don't give up. Even if it's something you went to an audition and you, you felt like you're kind of kicked in the gut a little bit, you didn't uh -huh. do your best. You just keep on practicing, surround yourself with like-minded people that love to do it. Not, a, not for a competition basis, but for, for, a team basis because they're your guys are all on the same team and you're trying to go into the, you know those directions of the the way the actor is and some some people don't are not out there to just to do tv and stuff like that i mean we have a little theater that i'm not part of down here but and there's people that just love to perform just for fun yeah. and and that's what they like to do and now that my son's 21 i can take him to comedy clubs with me so I'll just, sometimes he just doesn't like to be around yeah. so many people, but you just got to put the sound <laughs> headphones on and yeah. take them with you. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's really, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for your advice, Kay. Thank you for experience. Uh, thank you for sharing all your experiences, you know, all the things that happened to you. Uh, at the same time, the advice that you give is really precise to, okay, it clears the head up, it clears the mind for people who are in the situation uh, and it makes sure that okay okay i get it what she's saying and now i kind of unlock where i was stuck so uh thank you so much for your advice thank you so much for your time uh, and your story uh this was me and to every listeners everything related to kayleen is mentioned in the description of this episode so make sure you go and check out the description also make sure you go and follow her on instagram and whichever platforms you are really good uh spending time on so make sure you connect with kay Everything about Kay will be mentioned in the description. So, yep, that was it. This was an exclusive interview with actress Kay Lane. I am Ajay Tambe, and now I guess it's time to sign off. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching.